So let's start. Uh, welcome everyone to this um, session, uh, this Rally Rampage <coughs> session, navigation session. This is the um, third episode in my series to help guys navigate using a mobile device. Um, I'm also going to do a screen share of my mobile device to illustrate and show you um, um, Locus Maps. So to start off with, um, I'm going to start with with my slides. Um, <coughs> but this is a live demonstration, so so don't stress. Okay. So to start off with, I'm quickly going to tell you guys just what is Locus Maps. We're then going to look at the installation overview, how the interface looks, main functions, how to set it up, and how to um, then how to do stuff like how to navigate on your bike using using this. And for those of you guys that don't have a coffee. This is the way to go. <clears throat> my dad, <laughs> my dad cup. <laughs> Minute. Okay, so what what is Locus Maps? Locus Maps is a Android specific app. Unfortunately, it's not available for for iPhone um, or Crapple, <laughs> uh, which I don't use. I use Android, but it's a um, it's an Android based navigation app, very similar like Soros City Reva. There are lots of other apps out there, Maps.me, and all these things. I've used a lot of them, um, but I found that Locus just is, for me, once it's set up, is probably the simplest, most straightforward um, one to use. And I really prefer using <coughs> Locus. Okay, so um, Locus has been around for many years. I've been using it for four years. And anyone that's watched my previous webinars will know that I'm quite a staunch supporter of mobile navigation. Um, and going that route, getting away from, from garments and the traditional um, the, 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 the traditional uh, GPS devices. And one of the things that I really appreciate about um, Locus is that it's got tons of settings and modifications. Now, unfortunately, that also compounds the, the complexity. So a lot of people that start using Locus um, contact me and they've got a problem setting it up and stuff. And that's why I've got this little webinar. And although it's got so many functions, this is not a, a sort of a feature dump webinar. I'm not going to take you through all the features. I'm actually just going to show you the features that I use. Now, what I use it for is I use it for for um, adventure riding, group group riding, day outs, multi-day events. Um, I even do timed and competitive events, um, all that from my mobile phone and using just Locus. So before um, before I talk too much on that, let's get going and let's get started. I see. We and now I'm sharing my mobile screen. I'm going to turn my camera off and a really good size view of my screen there. Okay, so I'm navigating this with my mobile uh, with on my PC, which is quite cool. And what I want to show you is the first thing is just how to install Locus Maps. Fairly straightforward. Um, you go to your your app store. There we go. You have two versions of Locus Maps to look at. Um, Locus, the free version and the paid version. I'm currently on the pro version and all you do is you basically install it. I can't remember the cost and because it's already installed, it doesn't show the price, but it's really not that expensive. I think it's about $10 um, for a lifetime for, it's not a, it's not a, oh, it's under hundred grand. Keith, I'm um, great. So I would suggest um, to do that, uh, uh, to just buy the pro version. The free version obviously has a, a traditional, um, uh, what do you call it, Ad, ads in. And also there's a couple of features that, that I use that you don't get in the free one, but at a hundred rand, I mean, you get ad free and I'll definitely um, consider doing that. Okay, so let's get into Locus itself. Once you've installed Locus, um, there we go. That's, that's your icon there. And if you open up Locus, there's one more thing that I would recommend that you do. Locus comes with a normal, um, sort of a world map, but for, I think it's also for free or, or it is for a very little amount of money, you basically install uh, one of your local maps, like your country map. And it's quite easy to do. I'm quickly going to show you. I've already installed it. In, to install the first map, you basically open up, you go to Locus Store. So Locus has got its own online store that you can buy maps and stuff from, which is great. And it's, a, it's really great to browse it. You can browse by, by map or route or country or whatever. In our case, we're just going to basically look at South Africa. Whoops. 
South Africa there. And you'll see that's the region, but that's the, the map that they've got for us. And this map is really cool. Just download it. Mine is quite old, um, so I need to update it, and I'll do that a little bit later. Now, you'll see the initial map is 670 megs, so it is quite a large download. But once you've got the map, you sort it, and you don't really need anything else. So let's quickly look at the interface. It's a very intuitive interface like you have with most of these maps. Um, I'm, I'm demonstrating with my mouse. You can basically zoom in, zoom out. You've got your map that's showing. You guys will see by the blue and the red line, I have two routes that are currently showing. Um, if I zoom out quite a bit, because I'm using my mouse, I can't obviously pinch, which is why I'm using my um, these buttons at the bottom to zoom in. Now, apart from the main screen and the interface, you basically have four areas. You've got the top panel. They call them panels. So if you get to your settings, um, just look out for, for, for panels. Um, but you've got your top panel. In this case, I've got, it says waiting for GPS, and I've got a couple of buttons there. Then you've got your right-hand panel. Um, I only have two buttons there. I, I tend to keep my interface very simplistic. Um, the right-hand panels, you can actually load on, I think, four or five items. Then you've got your bottom panel which is also also default and you'll see that is the um <clears throat> the center button which will center on yourself and you'll see if i click it it will stay on that so we use that for bike riding if you click that and it's blue and you ride the the gps will follow you obviously the the map will follow you and you'll be at the center i'm just going to turn it off now because i'm going to move the map around otherwise it keeps on centering centering the map then you have a menu on the left hand side but I find that because one tends to read from left to right, I don't turn the menus on um, on the left-hand side. So the left-hand side buttons, the left-hand side panel is called the content panel. And you can also do quite a lot of stuff there, and I'll show you how to do these buttons. But that's basically the layout, top, left, right, center, and then your, your what we call a hamburger bar is on the um, top left side, which is where you've got access to your main menu and your main functions. So I'm quickly going to take you guys through these functions um, and show you just some of the cool things you can do. And then we'll go over onto just doing some map, map manipulation and, and everything. OK, so first things first, I'm just going to zoom out a bit. I'm going to open, click on my hamburger button. And you've got your first, um, your first features or functions, the six most important ones. And these are the ones that I actually use. So if you look at the my menu on the side here, you've got settings, tracks, record, map, or theme. These are the ones that you find here. But be, while you navigate, I tend to not open the menu. So it's great to put these buttons on the side so that you've got immediate access to them. So you've got your map manager. And <clears throat> the map manager is where you can do all kinds of really cool stuff with online maps and offline maps. Just remember um, something that I tend to forget if I reinstall Locus is you have to select the offline map. So you have to select which one you're going to use as your primary map. Um, sometimes you forget that, and then you don't get the detail because it's actually loading the world map. So just remember on your maps to use um, to select the one. You'll see um, the South Africa is blue, and that is now my primary map. There we go. OK, so on the map side, uh, let me go. OK, so on the, on the map side, that's just to, to work with the maps. The, the other two, so your four, your five most important points will be your map manager, your points manager, which are all your specific um, points of interest, um, because that comes with, with your routes that you design, your track and route manager, which is great, and then your track recording. And I use route planner, but the route planner is to change the route on the mobile, which isn't always ideal. And if you, if you watch my previous videos, um, you'll see that I use Google My Maps for my map planning, and then I use this. Now you'll see there's tons more functions here. If you go to more functions, there we go. You've got all your basic stuff that we've done now, map items, parking, weather. You've got a ton of stuff, geocaching, custom screens, which are the dashboards that we'll go through now. Then you've got mapping tools, um, connection, and this connection hardware is really cool. Um, I've started... I'm very interested in rallying, cross-country rally, rally riding, and I'm currently investigating with a couple of other guys doing hardware, um, handlebar hardware, so that you can actually manipulate your maps and stuff while you're driving or thumb, thumb controls. 
Then I'm quickly going to show you the points manager. Now, the points manager and the track and route manager is actually on the same screen. So if you go there, you'll see it's just two different tabs that you've got. Um, so if you go to tracks as well, you'll get to that screen. There we go. And what it what what it does is um, so on the tracks and points, um, what Locus does, which is quite quite cool, is it doesn't mix the two. And you can set up separate waypoints from your tracks itself. And what I do is these are all folders. So I tend to give my all my different trips um, names, and then my maps will be. So if I've got the let's say the Gauteng Stampede, which is one of our Gauteng outrights, um, if I go there, that's all my 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 routes and tracks and planned tracks, and even the recordings. If I if I design the route and I write it and I record it, I'll save that back into this folder. So the one folder has got all the routes of this Gauteng Stampede. Um, but I actually create the same folder name under points. So if there's a Gauteng Stampede on this side, I'll create, you have to do it manually, I'll create a Gauteng Stampede on the point side, which then has all my points in. So if I import anything from Google My Maps, I send the points the points of interest to points, and I send the routes to um, my routes. Okay, so the points and tracks are, are quite cool. Um, we'll go through that now. Let's say I, I just want we can actually do this one. Um, I actually want to go to tracks, and I just want to give you guys an idea of once you save stuff, what it looks like. Well, that's not good. Um, uh, let's take any of these these maps. I can basically select the map, open it. I can also edit the map. I can display it um, and, and go crazy with it. But basically, to get to it, you open your menu and you go to your tracks manager. Now, you'll see on my right-hand panel, I put a shortcut for um, to get to my tracks because I actually constantly show and display and hide tracks. So this is quite a... Uh, uh, a great shortcut um, to get to is to get straight to your your points in your tracks um, to do that. Now you'll see also what's quite cool with with Locus is I have a couple of maps visible and there's only three I, I know because I've actually obviously now for the demonstration done that. But um, I want to know where they are because I actually have a couple of hundred tracks on my on this this well Locus database. Um, so to get to that. You'll see on the right hand side, just next to the name, it actually shows how many items are in this folder, uh, how many items are visible. And that's a really a feature that I that I love of Locus because it's now easy to see. I've got one Centurion to cut in and um, visible. There it is. And I've got, if I just scroll down, there's Houting Stampede. And there was another one. There we go. There's um, a Stampede Light, which is also visible. So this interface to manage your tracks is actually great. And on some of them, let's say like the Gauteng Reiki, we've got almost 100 points, which means that if those points are scattered all over your map, your map actually gets quite busy. And it's really great to see um, how many points are active. And um, you'll see none of my points are active. I, I tend to keep my points inactive. OK, so just let's go back to the menu on the left hand side the map manager, points manager, track and route manager. Then we've got track recording, which is also something that you constantly do. And I keep on recording tracks. So even if I design a track in Google My Maps, I will still record the track so that I've got a per meter or per five meter detailed um, design of it. So your track recording, what it does is if you select it, you'll see at the bottom here, it adds on, um, it adds on the record panel on top of your other one. And that's quite easy then to just click on record and start recording um, your route. And I can hide that panel as well. Now, again, because I constantly use maps, tracks, and recording, I've got them loaded here. So you'll see on the, my right-hand panel there, I've got the recording app. And I'll show you now how to do these panels. Um, so yeah, so I can turn my, my panels on and off. So on the five main functions that I use, I'll quickly um, mention them. So the five main functions that I use are the maps, the points, the tracks, the recording, and then the editing. Um, and those will, those are the buttons that we've got.